Hello, good morning, good morning. How are you? Oh, I uh, thought I'd cover a, a different subject today, something that I haven't really touched on before. And that's what to do if you have a really, really bad day at work. <clears throat> and because I had one yesterday, I had a really, really bad day. So, I don't mean by really bad, I don't mean like a patient died in the surgery or anything, or that you got <clears throat> arrested by the police or something like that. That's, that's not what happened to me, you'll have to do your own investigation into that. I'm just talking about when you, you do your best and with your treatment and nothing goes according to plan. So, I've got one uh, lady comes in, nice lady, uh, I would say elderly, but very well presented, got lots of nice bridge work, used to be a dental nurse, very uh, dentally aware, you know. Uh, and her nerve in her upper left three died, her upper left canine. And it's the distal part of a bridge, so it's the uh, the bridge is upper left one, two, three, and I think it was done at the same time as another bridge. So they're all beautifully colour matched and everything. It'd be very difficult to replace this bridge. So I said to her, "Like, well, see if we can root treat the tooth through the bridge." So <clears throat> anyway, she'd had a lot of pain and swelling, uh, obviously around her eye area, and she said it's you know it's all over, you know, radiating down her face and everywhere and so we gave her antibiotics and so it was a lot improved when she came in and I palpated the uh, tip of the canine and it was obviously the canine because it was very sore and um, so we made a little hole in the back of the bridge and started looking for the root and um, we just couldn't find the root it was the, the nerve you know it was just sclerosed so I went up as far as I could as far as I dared uh, look, looking for it and poking away and it's been about half an hour trying to find it in the end I said to her like, I can't find it it's obviously blocked up it's uh, it's sclerosed and I can't it's a specialist job if you're going to need to have it root filled your choices are we either put some like uh, crestophene and uh, seal it up for a, for a month or so and see if that deals with the infection or if not then uh, uh, you know, if it does and you're happy, then I'll just seal it up and we'll treat it as a one-off. Otherwise, uh, you need to go off to see a specialist endodontist. And I think the recurring theme on these patients is that the, the stupidity that goes through their brains and comes out of their mouth. Because you just couldn't stop saying the same thing. Because I can't understand why it's died. I can't understand why it's died. Why has it died now? It's been fine for years and now it's died. Why has it died? And I can't blame the patients for asking the question why, but I do blame them a bit for when I explain to them that we have got absolutely no reason, and no way of knowing why, that um, there's, it's a pointless question, you know? It's like a video title I saw on YouTube yesterday, which was that if the, if the universe came out of nothing, who created the nothing and you know it's an oxymoron you, you don't create nothing nothing is not created nothing is nothing and in the same way as uh, my job is to diagnose and treat problems not to say why they happen you know you need to go to church and ask someone else why they visited her uh, it may be that the tooth was dead from when it was uh, but but has been asymptomatic, or it may be that um, the actual bridging of the tooth itself caused the uh, tooth to die, and w at which point it sclerosed itself up. And quite frequently, you find that people have got chronic infections, which are painless, and it's only when they go acute that they it comes to their attention. So it looks like they might have had a chronic infection for ten years, and then all of a sudden it goes acute and then they assume that the problem occurred on the day it went acute and not on the day it was chronic. 
and you get this a lot with um, again with lower incisors you get someone in who's got a brown or grey or lower incisor and you say I'm just going to take a quick extra of that because it doesn't look like the wrong cut it doesn't look like the right colour to me and then you sure enough you find they've got a lot of um, bone loss around the apex and the, the, the thing is quite obviously non-vital and that's why it's got a funny colour and so you say to the right the reason why that tooth brown or grey or whatever is because it's dead and oh why is it dead you know so I don't know now if you say like it may you may have banged it then very few people will say oh do you know what I remember I had a fight with my brother when we were 12 and he whacked me in the mouth with a baseball bat now if, if you've got a story like that you're very lucky but my, nine times out of ten the patient will say well I Oh, I don't, I don't know anything about that. You know, that never happened to me. So, it's obviously it's a bang that's long forgotten. So, but it doesn't mean that it, it wasn't due to a bang, and it doesn't mean that they've got that they haven't got a non-vital lower incisor that needs root filling. I know, I'm sorry, it's unfortunate, and it's an expense that you could do without, and it's a problem that you you don't want or need. But it's. You know, I've done my job. My job is to do the examination, diagnosis, and treatment planning. And I'm, unfortunately, uh, my job involves breaking bad news to people. Uh, so I've come to realise that increasingly it's breaking bad news to people. Um, it used to be breaking bad news to people who didn't want treatment, and it's now breaking bad news to people who don't want the treatment and haven't got any money to pay for it anyway. So. So what we did was we put some crestophene in and, and I sealed it up and and she's like, oh, this is inconvenient because I'm just about to fly off to France. We're buying a house in France and, and uh, you know, and you, you can't go over there to buy it. And, but she wasn't upset with me because she said to me before she left, you know, if you ever fancy a, a week in a house in the Dordogne or wherever, she said, just, you know, just let us know. Which I know she wouldn't, didn't mean it like that, but she was just boasted about the fact she got a house. But, uh, you know, I mean, what I mean is that she wasn't like upset or anything, or aggravated about it. She knew I'd done a bloody good job to try and find this canal. And I, I'm not a uh, dentist, uh, but, but <laughs> this again, it's something she said. She, she was a dental nurse, and I said, no, I can't find the canal. And I said, that's very unusual in a canine, because normally a canine's got quite a big, it's got a big banana shape root, and it's got a big old canal in it. And she said, yes, well, I worked for a dentist for 20 years, she said, and he never, he never failed to find a canal. And I'm like, what do I do? Do I rise to the bait? Do I, do I honestly say, look, I, I don't believe for a minute you worked for a dentist for 20 years and he never failed to find a canal? That, well, he'd have to have godlike powers wouldn't he to to have had a run at a streak of luck like that i don't believe that for a minute but i'm not going to but you know you, the, the trouble is that there's uh, criticism implicit in that isn't there it's in, inherently critical of your work that you're not as good as her dentist who had no trouble finding canals and here you are with uh, admittedly in your own words an easy a tooth and a big canal to find and and you can't find it now and I'm I'm speaking to you frankly as a sort of person who can easily find a canal if I've got a tooth and I'm the first person in I'd make a hole and if it's a molar lower molar I'm in there three canals duh, 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 no trouble no trouble but as I was explaining to the nurse while I was doing it the problem with trying to root treat teeth under bridges. You do not know what's underneath there. The tooth could be rotated 180 degrees for all you know underneath there. It could be full of uh, composite, which is practically, or glass ionomer, which is practically impossible to differentiate from the tooth. You're doing a keyhole surgery because you don't want to enlarge the hole in the bridge too much because you didn't make the bridge and therefore you don't know whether all the porcelain's gonna start popping off because they've done low fusing porcelain and it's been done in a really cheap lab. So, you know, it is, in many ways, if it's easy, it's easy, and if it's difficult, it's specialist. 
And having bought a house in the south of France, she's got the money to go to an endodontic specialist. So I'm really not going to perforate the route or end up having to do a free remake of the bridge uh, just to try and save her the cost of going to an endodontist. So, so that's how we left that. But that was frustrating and, and obviously her comments just got me annoyed. Then, then we had another guy in. We had two guys in, I mean, massive, massive guys yesterday. One of them was probably 30 stone. The other one was probably 40 stone. These guys, I daren't move the chair with them in because I don't, I, I don't, I know that they're going to overstress the hydraulics. My chairs are probably 15 years old and they're not really designed for pe people who weigh this much. Uh, they're not specialist chairs. And so, um, so we do, with, with the one that came in yesterday, the 30 stone block, I did, um, sitting back and we had to do a crown on I think the upper left six but um, anyway because he was so overweight you'd think being a big lad he'd have a big mouth but um, he, he was having a lot of trouble keeping his mouth open because he got so much flesh and fat and muscle around his jaws it, it was just difficult to stretch it all enough to, to keep his mouth open so we had to sort of do his his crown in in little bits, you know, like so. Instead of just doing the preparation for five or ten minutes, I had to do like ten seconds, then have a look, and then do another ten seconds, then have a look, and so that went okay. I mean, we managed to get a crown out of it, but God knows what the lab is going to say when they look at it. And then, then we had the piece de resistance, who was a Ukrainian woman, who was <coughs> sponsored in the UK by a lovely bloke who, who pays all her dental bills. So, I mean, she's fallen on her feet there because her, her mouth when she came to us was, was in a bit of a state. You know, she had broken teeth, she had decay, she got gum problems. And um, what we've done is we've tried to, uh, bearing in mind that she's learning English as she goes along. So every time she comes in, every two weeks, her English is a bit better. Initially it was very poor. But uh, I came up with a treatment plan for her and uh, we've been doing her work, but uh, we've had to contend with her trying to micromanage the whole thing and tell us how it's done in, in uh, Kharkiv where she comes from and how it's done in Ukraine and how it seems to be you know a problem uh, for us whereas in Ukraine the uh, doctors and dentists were all Soviet trained and they were all shit hot and uh, did a brilliant job and they did did a brilliant job first time, you know, never needed to adjust anything and well so So for example, we're doing a post crown on our upper right four and um, I mean we did Again to give you a bit of background. We did a root treatment on our upper right three and uh, She just kept coming back and saying no, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel right. It didn't feel right so in the end, I volunteered to do something which I don't normally do, which is I just said, look, I'll take the root filling out and see if that makes it any better. So I did, we spent a day, no, you know, spent an appointment, took the root filling out and um, put some crestfeed in it and then uh, sealed it up again. And then I said, to her, I'm not gonna root fill it until you tell me it's completely settled down. So it took, it took about a month or two to settle, till she was happy to say, yeah, okay, you know, I, 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 it's, I'll, I'll have a few to put it back in. So we put it back in. <laughs> She's still complaining that it, you know it feels a bit odd and blah blah blah, but not as much as she did before. And uh, uh, you know, enough for me to say, look, you know, leave, leave it to time to settle down, because root treatments can take a long time to settle down. My wife had a root treatment. She was moaning about it for two years. 
not me, by the way, someone else. We went back, that she had it done by an endodontic specialist. And we went back to see him twice, and twice he pointed out to her as a hygienist and me as a dentist, that this thing was a, done been done to a textbook standard. And, and I agree with him, it had been. I was just, you know, keeping her happy and seeing if he could come up with some reason why it might not feel right. But they, they just don't feel right after they've been root treated teeth. The bargain is they get to keep the tooth, but it's probably not going to feel right for a while. I mean, perhaps even a year or so. They don't feel the same as they did before, then they don't feel the same as they uh, did when they were vital. And they tend to forget the fact that they had a big swollen face and they were banging their head on the wall in pain, which is the thing you've cured. Anyway, this woman, she's in her 40s, I think. She's got no enamel on her back teeth. And I said to her, um, I'm worried that you've got uh, erosion of your teeth, something's eroding your enamel. And I said, you know, I gave her the usual spiel. It's going to be orange juice. It's going to be exceptionally, it might be vinegar, uh, cider vinegar diet or something, or it could be um, carbonic acid from fizzy drinks. So no, 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 I don't drink any of those. So I'm like, okay, so you've got idiopathic erosion. You know, the best you can do with these patients is say, well, perhaps it's historical damage. But the problem is the temporary crown that I put in for the four, which was okay on the bite when she left, she then started coming back about the four, saying that the crown was too high. So we adjusted the bite on the crown, and then like two days later, she's back saying the bite on the crown is still too high. So we adjusted the bite on the crown again, and then she went away for eight days or whatever until the crown comes back. And then we fit the crown and the bite on the crown is too high. Which I could see the bite on the crown was too high. Which is very, very odd. I can't, unless her, she's lying to me about drinking battery acid and her erosion is very rapid, which it could be because her teeth are very short now. Um, I can't understand why uh, a temporary crown would be high twice and her crown would be high because we are like you know we do the whole Monty we do full arch impressions we do uh, we use quality materials we use blue mousse to take the bite and everything so there's no reason why uh, it should be substantially wrong on the bite unless her bite is is decreasing even, you know even as we speak but she denies that and she's also got this tendency to laugh about uh, when things go wrong, you know, which I mean, it might be a cultural thing. I know, again, like on the Indian uh, subcontinent, it's like uh, if uh, someone's embarrassed or angry, even sometimes they sort of smile. And um, so you have to, again, be very careful of cultural uh, differences. But I think she's westernized enough to know that, well, let me put it this way she's westernized enough to know to she's taking the piss out of me and saying how good the dentists were in Kharkiv and how uh, she'd be happy to invite me to Kharkiv so that I could talk to her, the dentist there and work and learn how to do everything properly and uh, while at the same time culturally insensitive enough to know that in a polite British society even though that might be said half in jest that is really not uh, calculated to endear yourself to whoever you're talking to so I'm having to grin and just I think well I don't I don't really care to be honest I'm just committed to doing whatever's necessary to to get a nice crown fitted and, and get her out of the surgery but you know she's the same same as the woman saying oh my dentist never missed a canal and she's like oh my dentist in khaki would have would have um, would have had this right straight away you know the first it would have would have I wouldn't have had a crown that was a temporary crown that was high and I would I wouldn't have had a crown that didn't fit and you know, they would have done it properly so, and that's what really gets you riled up, you know. But I think what you have to do is you have to sort of take a step back and say, look, first of all, I'm a good dentist. I know I'm a good dentist. I mean, I, I, just not finding one canal in 40 years is not, doesn't make me a bad dentist. Secondly, um, you know, if a Ukrainian person comes to you with um, all sorts of um, stupidity about uh, 
eating echinacea or something to strengthen her teeth up and has got no enamel because of um because it is erosion whatever she said is erosion even if she don't, won't admit it or doesn't know about it has got um you know broken teeth roots five root fillings and um a, a ton of really advanced decay then i i got to tell you that these dentists in car cube now they can't be that fucking brilliant can they uh, this is the pro she's the product she's the product of a car cube dentist then i've got to tell you they're not a spot on us so let's just you know let her have a little laugh get her fixed get her out of surgery relax and just you know perhaps i don't know what you do double her fees in future try and deter her from coming back well, at least you can, I mean, you could look front load her fees because obviously it just takes more time than normal. I mean, she literally does take three times as long as everyone else just because she won't shut up. In the end, I had to say to her, look, just, I'm sorry, just, I'm working. Can you just not talk for about five minutes while I just sort out this crown? Anyway, so that's my bad day, all right? And I'm sure, you, 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 I'm sure you've had them. And, I, and if you haven't, then you will do. So that's what makes a bad day and that's how to deal with it all right okay bye